Today, today I'm not particularly excited because there's a redstone feature that has been in Minecraft for donkey's years now and it's a redstone feature that I never really played with simply because, well for me personally they just, they never seem to fit into my redstone contraptions. But hopefully I'm going to change that because in this video I am going to be building redstone contraptions only using locking repeaters. Oh. Now for anyone who isn't familiar with this feature, if we power a repeater from the side using another repeater, that will actually lock the repeater, meaning that even if we power and unpower it, it's not going to change its state until this repeater turns off and then of course that unlocks the repeater. So I think the first thing that I should do is I should try my best to get to grips with this feature and create some really simple circuits like monostable circuits and T-flip flops and things which clearly hasn't got off to the best of starts. <laughs> I think this might be actually more tricky than I was expecting. <laughs> I just keep creating things that just stay on forever. Ah, this, I've never, you know what, I've, I'm going to be totally honest, I've never even tried to understand these things. That's what I'm realising today. I think I'm going to actually, this, this episode might just be called Trying to Understand Locking Repeaters. Because it's just not going into my head. Finally, I've managed to make some measurable progress here. I kind of sat back for a little while and just thought through the game mechanics. And then when I came back into the game, I was a little bit clearer as to how things should function. And I've managed to make a falling edge monostable circuit. So as you can see, when we power this lever, this repeater should power this repeater, which would then in turn power the redstone lamp. But it doesn't because this repeater locks that repeater so it doesn't get powered. But when we flick it off, what happens is, is that this... This repeater is still powering this repeater, but then this repeater unlocks the repeater just in time for a little bit of redstone to travel through and power the redstone lamp. I, th I think that made sense, I don't know. And now I've made it a lot more compact. Okay, so that's the falling edge. I wonder if I can make a rising edge. I guess if we flip this around... Um, I mean, okay, so let's, let's, let's not make it more compact just for the time being, just for ease. Okay, so this is now a rising edge monostable circuit, which is a little bit more useful. And now I'm back to making things that constantly power themselves. But I was on the right track, and now we have ourselves actually a, a pretty decent little silent monostable circuit. No pistons involved, obviously, other than the one that's demonstrating the fact that it is a monostable circuit. Okay, so this is a good start. I guess now it's time to create some form of T flip flop. Once again, only using locking repeaters. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated than something like a monostable circuit because. I mean, there, there's actual logic involved here. This is just kind of cutting off a pulse. That's easy enough. But we now actually need to apply redstone logic to the problem. And I'm not very logical. I came up with the concept once again. Didn't work and now it's just self powering yourself and I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm getting somewhere here. Maybe. Maybe not. Probably not. You see, my logic here is that we have to factor in the output of the machine. So it need, the machine needs to do something different when it's toggled on so that it toggles off and stays off. And then it needs to do something different when it's off so that it toggles on and stays on. There's, there's no real way to do it without factoring in the output. It's just trying to work out how to do that. Wait, that's a redstone clock. That kind of works, but it's cheaty a little bit. <laughs> like, I'm sure that will only work. Yeah, that will only work with a button. So if we flick this lever, that's just going to turn it into a redstone clock. It's not really a team flip-flop. <laughs> but... That's on. And that's now off. I mean, you could, you could, you could class that as a T flip flop. I just thought I'd take a look on Google to see what other people are creating with locking repeaters and T flip flops, and this seems to be the most common design, which is a more compact version of the thing that I've just created. But of course, it only works with certain pulse lengths, which isn't ideal. So I'm going to see if any of the other designs on Google actually function with different pulse lengths. Now, this first one that I found doesn't actually function. Apparently it was built in the snapshot, which means that it no longer works, so that's not a great start. But this one over here does seem to function, and it functions with all different pulse lengths. So if we just run this redstone up, you can see that that redstone lamp is now powered, 
And now it is unpowered. Right, let's try and work this out. So the first thing that's quite obvious to me is that we've got ourselves an RS null latch over here. So we hit the button, it flips, we hit the button, it flips, we hit this button over and over again, and it's not going to change until we hit that button over there. Okay, so we've got some logic there. Now what does this part play in that process? Well, let's just have a look. If we hit this button, you'll see that the redstone will power this repeater, which will then power this redstone dust, which will cause our RS null latch to toggle from this state into this state. That redstone dust will then run around and power this repeater, but it won't power the repeater because that repeater will be locked by this button press. But as you can see, eventually when the button turns off, these repeaters will then unpower, allowing the redstone signal to travel through the repeater, locking this repeater in an off position. So that means that this is no longer affecting the circuit, which means that we now just have an RS null latch. So if we were to hit this button, you can see that it flips back over to this state, and that will happen again, and this repeater will stay locked off until the redstone signal turns off here, and turns off here, in which case this repeater will unlock this repeater, allowing this repeater to realize that it's no longer being locked anymore. That's some really smart redstone logic right there. I never would have been able to come up with that myself, so to whoever created this design, oh, it's beautiful, really beautiful. And to the three people out there who actually listened to that and understood it, congratulations, I'm sure you appreciate it too. But all this talk of RS null latches and logic and things has actually got me thinking, I wonder if you could create an RS null latch using locking repeaters. In theory, it makes sense. Hmm, yeah, this isn't going so hot. This isn't going so hot. Or is it not? Is it? No, no, it's not going well. You know what's really frustrating about this is that, you know, I've been doing this for a few hours now and I've been looking at a bunch of locking repeater designs and I don't seem to be getting any closer to working out and being comfortable with using them in my own redstone builds. I don't think I could come up with a solution to a redstone problem using locking repeaters. It's really odd. Okay, I don't mean to blow my own trumpet here at all. I've actually come up with something pretty smart though. This is an RS null latch. So when we hit this button here, that's off, and we can keep hitting this button, nothing's going to change, that is always going to be off. But when we hit this button, that turns on. So that works. <laughs> There's on, and that is always going to be on. And that's off and that is always going to be off. And that is really small. Like there, that is, that's a regular sized RS null latch right there. So three by three. This one is really tiny, really, really tiny. I'm proud of myself here. I'm really proud of myself. I guess another thing that we can use these locking repeaters for is actually to produce pulse extenders. So here we have a really small version of an abrogate. Now for those of you who don't know what an abrogate is, uh, it, it's essentially that redstone circuit right there. But what we used to do before locking repeaters, or I guess what we still do now to a certain extent, is we would construct something like this. So it's a tiny bit smaller in terms of its footprint, I suppose but it has exactly the same output. So we're looking at that block right there, the pulse gets extended. Now obviously, these sorts of pulse extenders aren't so common anymore because we now have the comparator pulse extenders, but that that is still a useful thing to have in the toolkit. Oh, now this is where things could get interesting because you can use comparators to lock repeaters as well, which means that... Okay, that is literally the least... Okay, yeah, no, this is... That's a terrible combination lock that I've just created right there. <laughs> it literally doesn't work in the slightest. But it, it's interesting. Comparators locking repeaters. I mean, there's there's lots that you can do with that. Whoa. Well, I've just broken a comparator. Yeah, there's there's definitely some quirkiness going on with... I mean, that's saying that the repeater's locked. But it doesn't, it doesn't look locked to me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And I think on that note, it's time to end today's Redstone video. I don't know if I've even scratched the surface. I don't even know if I've come any closer to understanding these mysterious elements in Redstone that I never seem to have understood in my many years of using it. 
Let me know down in the comment section what I'm doing wrong. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please draw to that like button. If you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.